Ladies and gentlemen, I do not have an intro today, but I do have the uh, NBA Southwest Division preview and predictions here uh, that's going through the Houston Rockets, Memphis Grizzlies, San Antonio Spurs, Dallas Mavericks, and New Orleans Pelicans, and this division is a little bit interesting just based on the fact that there are a um, there are a, uh, a lot of teams in this mix here, but a lot of you are hopping on the Houston Rockets dick wagon, and I think that's premature just because you don't know how they will pan out. So the first team to review is the Houston Rockets and or preview, and that's uh, Westbrook coming on. Obviously, he's coming on through that uh, Chris Paul trade, and that is um, that is big news. The only thing is, is that Westbrook and James Harden primarily are both very ball dependent, and I don't know on paper they they come together as a fantastic uh, duo. The only problem is, is that they are very ball dependent. Um, and this team in general is not as strong around as it was maybe last year. They did re-sign Austin Rivers and Gerald Green as well, who I just got a notification earlier has a broken foot, so I don't know how long he'll be out for, but he could be bad. I don't know. It really depends. That could be a while. Uh, they also added Tyson Chandler for center, even though Clint Capella is going to have that center spot locked down. So your starting five is Russell Westbrook, James Harden, uh, Eric Gordon, P.J. Tucker, and Clint Capella. I uh, do have them making the playoffs. They're not going to be that bad, but the West is so strong this year, and it really is going to pan out to see how... Um, James Harden and Russell Westbrook play together in terms of their uh, play style. You know, Westbrook is very ball-dependent player, and James Harden as well, and they're both offensive monsters. But uh, defense might be a little bit weak on this uh, Houston Rockets team, but I still have them making the playoffs. And I had them in the 60s, but I think that was a little bit low. we got to give them a little bit more of the benefit of the doubt. Give them, I'm going to say swap them in Utah and have the Houston Rockets in the fifth seed spot. Um, you have also... Like I said, Russell Westbrook is very ball heavy. He sometimes can shoot up to 50 shots a game. You've seen him do that in the playoffs with the Thunder. Uh, I don't think he's going to be putting up 40 points a game with James Harden, but if this duo is as it could be and they both put up 30, sometimes 40 points a game, this Rockets team could be a lot higher up in the West. But I think just because we don't know how they're going to pan out and work together as a duo, I would say put them in the fifth seed in the West uh, just for that reason so alone. But the Rockets team could be very fun to watch, and that would be a team to look out for. But um, in other news, you do have the next team to review or preview is the Memphis Grizzlies. And before everybody shits all over this team, this team has been awful for so many years. And it's actually one of the teams that I think is worse than the New York Knicks. And the Knicks are going to are slowly beginning their rebuild as well. But um, Memphis Grizzlies are a little bit difficult because they lost a lot, but yet they gained what could potentially be great. Um, they lost Mike Conley via trade and Marcus Gasol as well into the Raptors. But the team did have a very good offseason. Drafting John Morant at the number two spot is huge. Um, if you've seen his film and you've seen his highlights, he has the potential to be a great point guard in the league, and he reminds me a little bit of a mix of Kyrie Irving and Russell Westbrook. And if you put them two together, that is a lethal combination. We'll all have to see how it pans out, obviously. But uh, John Morant is who they drafted the number two spot as the Knicks got the number three pick. And I think that... Um, also, they had drafted Brandon Clark late in the first round. They did ditch that huge, humongous uh, Chandler Parsons contract. Uh, Andre Iguodala comes along, but I don't think he comes along willingly. Obviously, you know he wanted to stay on Golden State. But Iguodala doesn't even want to be on the Grizzlies, and I don't even know if he's going to play. He even said he might hold out. Um, I can only imagine what it's like to go from fucking the beautiful area of the Bay in, in California just to then go to Hillbilly Bobville in Memphis, Tennessee. I, I don't... I feel bad for him. I don't know how much money they gave him. I think it was a lot, but Tyus Jones as well does come along. Josh Jackson and Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard is not a big name anymore. He's a big name because he's Dwight Howard, but he's bounced around on one-year contracts, and Dwight Howard has not given anything of any value to the NBA in the last five years. Um, the Grizzlies team is not going to make the playoffs, but uh, they do have the potential to uh, work their way along and potentially see what you could get out of them um they won't make the playoffs but they do have some names in there and it's going to be very fun to watch John Morant and see what he does and what he brings to the NBA as a whole um I definitely think if the Knicks got the number two spot I still feel like they would have drafted RJ Barrett because they knew that Zion was going at one but Morant would have been a solid guess but we have 75,000 point guards anyway so I don't think the need for that is really there but the Memphis Grizzlies teams will not make the playoffs, but their starting five. Memphis Grizzlies starting five is John Morant at point, 
Dillian Brooks at shooting guard, Kyle Anderson at small, Jaron Jackson at power, and Jonas Valanciunas as well, who they got in that Toronto trade as well. But do not expect anything from the Memphis Grizzlies, but look out for John Morant. The next team, now this team could make the playoffs. They definitely would if they were in the Eastern Conference, but they could miss just as easy as they could make. I think that they have potential to make the playoffs, but they will be um, hovering towards the bottom of the Western Conference, and that's the Dallas Mavericks. Dirk Nowitzki announced his retirement, and he's the greatest Maverick to ever live. But the problem is, is that over the last two, three seasons, Nowitzki should have retired a while ago. And Vince Carter, I don't know why, but he's still playing for whatever reason. Um, they did a complete revamp, but this team is rebuilding. But I think the process of the Mavericks rebuilding is going to be a lot faster because they already have a star in Luka Doncic as well. And Porzingis is coming back from that ACL injury. And I think he has potential to be better than he was on the Knicks uh, just because he looks like he has a better uh, physique and he, he's built himself up a lot more. Uh, they have Porzingis coming along. They gave him a super max, but they're going to need him to stay healthy. The second Porzingis gets hurt, regardless of what happens, everyone's going to say that Porzingis is a bust. Not true. Um, they need him to stay healthy. He needs a breakout season. Boban Marjanovic comes along as well, and Seth Curry was signed. So this team's starting five is Dion Wright. At point, Luka Doncic as shooting guard, Justin Jackson at small forward, Porzingis at power, and Dwight Powell at uh, center. This Mavericks team can make the playoffs, but I don't know that they will. So if they do, I'm going to say they make the A seed in the playoffs, but um, definitely looks to be an um, exciting team, and you're going to really want to see how all of these players pan out and how they all work uh, with each other. The Mavericks are going to be an exciting team to watch. I want to see how Porzingis and Doncic work together in terms of a, a duo because there's going to be so many dynamic duos in uh, the NBA this upcoming season, but it's going to be interesting to see how they work and how they pan out with each other, um, basically, for this team. If it's to coach, this team will be relevant. It's the San Antonio Spurs. They were solid with their draft choices, and they have been. They drafted Lucas Semenik. Keldon Johnson, and they signed Damari Carroll as well, and DeJounte Murray's coming back, and they're actually going to get to see what they get from him from his ACL injury. I have Derek White as well. At court, um, DeJounte Murray's your point guard, Derek White's your shooting guard, Rosen's your small forward, but Marcus Aldridge is your power forward, and Jacob Poletti is your center. So the Spurs team, for me, is another team that I feel like just because Craig Greg Popovich breathes air and he's surrounding his team, that you have to put them somewhere in that playoff mix. Um, this is really difficult because either... The Spurs and the Mavericks have to miss, so I'm going to trace back and say the Mavericks are going to miss the playoffs, but they'll get that ninth seed. Uh, I have the Spurs in the eighth seed. I just actually forgot about them because there's another team that I haven't mentioned, which I'll get to when I get to the Pacific Division um, as well, but I do I have to put the Spurs in the playoffs just because of the Spurs, so I'm going to have them at the eighth seed, and I feel like the eighth seed in the West is going to be up for grabs strongly, and the reason I say that is because, A, the eighth seeds in the um, West could either be some of the teams I'm saying could be the eighth seed, could be the seventh. But the seventh seed I have reserved for a team that has been so fantastic the last couple of years, but really their stock took a drop. And you'll get to that in the next division as well. But I do have the Spurs taking the eighth seed in the West, and I think they're going to get abolished in the first round based on whoever they play. But they will be there. Greg Popovich is a very smart coach, and he'll use what he has to his ability and make them very well-rounded. But... Last but not least, I really breezed through this one, um, is the New Orleans Pelicans. And this is a team, another team, where they're not, it all depends on how they're going to work together. They're not nearly as um, involved as the Mavericks are, I think. This is another team, they won't make the playoffs, but they're definitely a team where, look to see how it pans out this year, they develop chemistry and see what happens next year. Um, the drafting of Zion Williamson was huge. The Pelicans got the number one pick, and we knew that whoever got the number one pick this upcoming season was going to pull the trigger on Zion Williamson, who is the most high. Um, Zion Williamson is going to be huge, and you've already seen so far he's waiting to break out. It's going to be unreal to see what he does on NBA tip-off night and just what he does for the Pelicans in a whole. Um, he should have been a Nick, and I'm saying that out of sadness because I wish he was, but he's leading the Pelicans. But the Pelicans were quick, and they were very quick to surround him with um, quality talent. Uh, there was huge offseason for the Pelicans in general, and their their stock went up. If they were in the Eastern Conference, they'd also be a playoff team. They acquired Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart, Brandon Ingram, and Isaiah Bonga, and Jerome Jones as well. They drafted Jackson Hayes as well. They signed Derek Favors, and they also signed J.J. Redick, who's a spot-up shooter. So 
but the Pelicans were quick to surround the uh, Zion Williamson with talent. And if you look at this this starting five, there, it's really not that bad. You have Lonzo Ball at point, Drew Holiday at shooting guard, Brandon Ingram at small, Zion Williamson at power, and Derek Favors at center. And I think that this is a team where they're going to have a high-powered offense. Um, we can really see what happens. There's a chance the Pelicans might get the playoffs. I just don't see it, like I said, because the West is so strong. And there's only eight teams that can make it. So I would say bank on the Pelicans missing the playoffs, but it's really hard to see. It's all going to come into factor to see what the um, – it's all going to come into factor to see what Zion Williamson brings to the table. It's not so much for him, but how the team plays around him. And does he make his teammates better? Is it is it going to be a disaster? Are they an overhyped team? Watch out for the Pelicans to see in the upcoming seasons. I went through this review kind of fast. But this is it, ladies and gentlemen. The grand finale of the NBA preview and predictions, which you are not going to want to miss, is coming up. And that is the Pacific Division because I feel like just that division alone needs an intro that is going to get people talking. So thank you for watching. But I'm going with the Rockets and the Spurs in this division to make the playoffs. I think the Mavericks have a chance. The Pelicans have a very slim but outside chance. It all depends what's going to happen around them. But thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been fun, um, and like I said, the Pacific Division is coming up, and this was the last before that, so maybe a couple days before I get to that, but it is going to be it is going to be a blast to do that. So thank you for watching.